Hey, hey, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. My name is Dave, and this here is Steve Edwards. And for the next 60 minutes, you know exactly what we are going to talk about. We are going to be talking about mules and donkeys and how you can gain trust, get results with that animal. Steve, how are you doing this day? Hey, I've got another good day started. By golly, I... Uh... <laughs> Yesterday we had kind of a tough day. Susan was out in the garden. A darned old rattlesnake was out there with her. But I gave him my new home, and uh, he's on vacation now permanently. <laughs> Very good. Hey, you got a picture there. Let's see what you got going on. It's it's me and my buddy. That's right. Look at that. This, oh man, what was his koala. name? Do you know what his name is? Her name was Koala Bear. Koala Bear, <laughs> love it. Yeah, yeah, she was a dandy. I kept having to poke her to get her to wake up, but there we are, by golly. That was one of my trips when I was in Australia, and uh, just couldn't pass this one up, you know? I was going to say, you don't have uh, you don't have that koala bear there on ranch, do you? No, 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 no. I'm afraid that the koala bear would not like uh, it, the heat here right now. Yeah. Uh, 112 degrees was yesterday and it was 138 degrees on the ground yeah yes. it gets pretty dang hot uh steve had sent me a message uh, uh last week and i said steve <laughs> I, I said something like hey how's it going out there and steve sent me back a thermometer and it said 128 degrees and i'm like oh my goodness usually it's cooler out by the ranch what and then it said on the ground i was like oh okay that makes a little bit more sense uh it's not cool by any means when it's a little bit less than that but it's uh it's not 128 degrees on your body just on the yeah. ground hey well folks uh it, like i said we come here every wednesday to talk mules and donkeys and you are in for a real treat. One of the great things that I get to do being a part of Mule Ranch is I get to interact uh, with so many mule and donkey owners, uh, clients, folks asking questions, folks looking, looking for things on the store, folks trying to find instruction from Steve, folks trying to uh, get in touch with Steve and get some answers and saddle sizer, all this different stuff. And I can tell you as somebody firsthand who gets to interact and dialogue with uh, just so many people, uh, you are in for a treat because, yes, we're here to talk mules and donkeys, uh, but there's something even more valuable. And that is all of the names and the faces that you are going to find in the chat sections on YouTube and Facebook. These, uh, I want you to know, you see some faces right there chatting in Facebook, which, by the way, if you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, uh, go ahead, put your name where you're watching from and what the weather is like today in your part of the woods. Uh, put that in there. And as you see folks' names pop up, I want you to know that there's some, amaz there's some amazing folks right there and encourage you uh, to interact with them, get to know them, ask them about themselves, about their mule, uh, about their rides, and let's build and grow a strong community uh, of, of folks who, quite frankly, we've got each other's backs and we've got folks to ride when we tra ride with when we travel across the country. Um, oh, yeah. Like I said, the first thing we ask is that you put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comment section. The second thing is that you ask any and every question that you got. And the third thing is that you share the broadcast with uh, other friends, other family, folks who you know are interested in uh, in mules and donkeys. Steve, you were hanging out a little bit with someone who was interested in uh, mules and donkeys. You were up north a little bit. Why don't you tell us a little about where you were the last couple days? Oh, yeah. What a character. James Montana. Now, there's a name for you. And uh, he actually works uh, as a uh, nurse up at the VA hospital. Uh, but James is a character. He's got a cowboy heart, something serious. And um, his dad was in the cavalry. Uh, and, and he was, it was, uh, oh, what's that called? Um, you know, he told me what the name of it is, and I forgot it. Not, not Bavaria. Uh, anyway, he was... Uh, it was, shoot, anyway, he was in the cavalry, and I've seen a picture of him when I was up here, I've seen a picture of his dad, and uh, he's, poor James has gone through an awful lot. I mean, we gonna, we're going to go up there and shoot some video with him, you and I, and uh, the kids are going to play together and have a good time, but the poor guy really would like to have a nice donkey, 
and he's got a pretty fair one right now, but don't gone at all. People, I don't know if it's just dishonesty or just flat don't know, hmm. uh, because this donkey is supposed to have 75 rides on him, and he doesn't have a clue. Mm. Uh, the the feet are horrible. The condition of the animal is horrible. Man, uh, it's it's and he paid a lot of money for it. Plus he had it shipped uh, clear from uh, North Carolina over, you know. And so he's got a lot of money in this donkey. And this donkey is, folks, is you know when it, there's things that you need to look for, Dave, uh, when you when you're looking at these donkeys and mules and stuff on the internet, you know. So things we need to be talking about here as we get on this program. Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. So as I said, folks, if you're watching, uh, so grateful and glad that you're here. We're going to get into the questions. We'll get started here with questions as soon as we welcome you. Uh, but if you do have a question, put it in the comment section. We uh, This program is all about you. Steve and I love hanging out with one another. We love spending time together. I love having my little boys around Steve and Susan. Uh, we could do that anytime. But this program is all about you making sure that, hey, you've come in from the corral, you've come in from the stall, you've come in from riding. Uh, there's some things that you're probably wanting to work on and get a little bit more refined in. Uh, now is the time to ask those questions and uh, we'll do the best we can to, to answer for you. Uh, I want to say hello uh, to Faye. Faye is watching from Australia. So we've gone right. international right yep. away. So good to have you here, Faye. Joy is watching from Australia international again. We've got Chris watching uh, from Maine at 78 degrees, just started to rain. We We've got Tammy watching from Haskell, Oklahoma. Hot and steamy, she says. Uh, Clark, uh, Wyoming. David's watching. Stephanie over on YouTube is watching from Idaho. 91 degrees in the Idaho today. Good to have you here, Stephanie. Uh, Terry's watching from Bellevue, Colorado. We've got Cowboy Ken watching from Connecticut. About 90 degrees. We've got uh, Carolyn, Arlington, Texas. 93 degrees out there in the uh, in the great state of Texas. Uh, let's see, Linda the mule servant and Theo the sweet one-eyed mule are watching in cool and thunderstormy rural o central Ohio. Uh, Ron is watching from Alberta, Canada. We've gone international again. Uh, hello to all of our friends up north of the border. We've got uh, Trisha, a lot of folks here, Steve. We got Trisha watching from Alaska, currently cloudy and rainy, but still 18 hours of daylight. It sure is. They've got all that daylight to go. That, what's that? I say, Trisha owes me a phone call. Trisha? Trisha, yeah. do you owe Steve a phone call? Uh, yeah. At 4 o'clock, he's going to be free. So give him a ring. <laughs> We've Get got Gretchen watching from North Florida, 92 degrees. Laurel from North California. Good to have you here, Laurel. And then uh, Kevin is watching, and this is going to be our first question of the day. Kevin says, hi, Steve. Have you ever heard of a trinicale hay, and is it okay for mules. Trinicale hay and is it okay for mules? Steve? That's a new one on me, Trinicale. I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all. Uh, here, here oh, Let's just do it this way, folks. Yeah. When you say hay, it can be a variety of grasses and, a, and this sort of thing. But here's the main thing. Does the hay have the vitamins and minerals in it that you need? Okay. It can be Timothy hay, it can be rye grass, I mean, yada, 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 haze. But, folks, different times of the year, you're going to have different vitamins and minerals and strengths and carbohydrates in that hay. Just because you buy a bale of hay don't mean it's a bale of hay. Folks, it's important. You take vitamins and minerals, your meal needs vitamin and minerals. You need salt in your diet. The mule needs salt in his diet. The donkey needs salt in their diet so that they can digest in their system, okay? So I don't know the hay, but here's the thing, folks. When you buy a bale of hay, or my suggestion is always buy it for a year. <coughs> buy a year. Because the problem is you buy different, you buy hay, and it comes from this county, this state, this farm, different places, and you're not just buying hay. Folks, you're buying from different places. So again, it's a different makeup. It's a, and that's very important. That's why, Dave, I only feed pellets. Then I hate pellets, and I realize, folks, it's hard to get. Everybody looks for lake and light, L-A-K-I-N, 
and like to eat. No, you can't get it in every place in the United States, but yes, you can go to the to my website and you can read the article, Meals Cannot Stand Prosperity. You can read that article and it'll give you an air at the end are, are all a makeup of that and ingredients of that feed. Now listen, that is only the beginning. You may need a little bit different zinc or vitamin A or vitamin B in a different part of your state, or you may be selenium uh, short, could be lots of things. But just because you buy a bale of hay doesn't mean it's the vitamins and minerals that you need for your mule and donkey. See your veterinarian, get a hair sample, get a blood test, and see what it needs, folks. This mule, this donkey depends upon you to keep them healthy. You're thinking about going and riding and enjoying life. The donkey's thinking about what's, f what's for dinner, you know? <laughs> and how come you haven't cleaned my corral yet? And this sort of <laughs> thing. So, so here's, here's the thing, folks. Just because it's a particular hay, it depends on the time of the year as to when that hay is gonna be the best for the mule or donkey. Very good. Awesome. We get lots of questions about feed and nutrition and man, we are sure glad to answer them. Folks, I put a link in the comment section for the Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. You need to check out that particular article. Uh, not only does Steve go through uh, explaining feed according to use and just the damage that carbohydrates can do and just supercharging those animals if you're not going to use those carbohydrates, it has the ingredients that you want in your feed in a in a, a nutrition program. And one of the things that you talk about, Steve, and, and you could add to this if you want, but just you keep all of your mules separate in different stalls. And uh, there's a couple reasons for that. And tell me, tell me if I've got this. First, you want that mule dependent upon you because if he's out in pasture, he's happy, he doesn't need you, he doesn't want to come to you, he has everything he needs. The second reason is that you can monitor his food intake, you can monitor his water intake, you can monitor, monitor his nutrition overall, knowing exactly what that mule has eaten and you keep them separate. Did I nail it? Did I get it right? You did it perfect. You know, you did it great. See, that's when you, when you look at a lead mare, when she decides to go over and get a drink, she starts moving. Everybody else follows her because she's the leader. If she stops to eat in a place, everybody's going to follow her because she's the leader. In other words, she tells their feet to move. And when it moves, it's moved toward water, move toward food. Or if someday flight and fright kicks in because of a lion or something, it's get out of here and go. You know, So they depend upon her to show them which way life needs to go. And that's what we need to be. It is imperative, folks, that you are the herd leader. Imperative. Very good. And that's what we're going to do all this hour is help you become the herd leader. And if you've got questions, put them in the comment section. Andrea's watching from North Carolina. It's drizzly in the 70s. I'll take that any day, Andrea. Send it our way. Uh, Debbie is watching from cool California. We've got Marlene in hot and humid Texas. Robert is watching. Bob is watching from Seguin, Texas. 100 degrees right there on the nose. Uh, Kevin is watching from Orangevale. Myra, Myra, I owe you an email. I will get back to you. Myra from Southern California is watching. Uh, Bill uh, is watching, uh, sharing to Mules of Ohio. Heavy rain this morning, sunshine and 85 degrees now. And we appreciate that share, Bill. Folks, one of the best ways you can show your appreciation and that you like what we're doing here is tell your friends. Get your friends on here. Do not keep us a secret because when your friends find out that you've been watching Steve Edwards, that you've been talking to Steve Edwards, that you've been getting personal help from Steve Edwards and you didn't share, you may have some reconciliation that needs to happen on that relationship there. So make sure you tell your friends. Tracy is watching. Uh, look forward to when you do a clinic in Gippsland, Victoria, Australia. We have gone international again. Steve, you love yourself some Australia, don't you? Oh, I love Australian folks. Matter of fact, I'll be on a conference call tomorrow with some folks from Australia. That's good. 
get you going international. They're coming yeah. to Austin watching us. We're ready to send Steve out international. Get Steve going international there. Uh, Steve, speaking of Steve, Steve Sparks is watching from Burns, Oregon. Jana Griffin watching from warm Wyoming. Good to have you here, Jana. Kevin uh, yeah, followed yeah. up the question. Trinicale is a grain, hay, oats, or rye. So there you go. That's what that Trinicale is. Okay. Right, good. Uh, well, there so, again, you know. Yeah. But, you know, do they really need the oats? Do they really need the rye? Because here's the problem, folks. Oats, what is that? Carbohydrates. What's rye? Carbohydrates. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you need to know the strength of the stuff. And I was going to tell you about your hay. You can take a sample of your hay into, I lost the name of it again. I always do that. It uh, happens. You know it, what? It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon here, and it's about nap time for both of us, Steve. So it happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they need to go test that hay. Folks, test your hay. See what's in there. What's going to blow you away is the snake parts and the rat parts that are in there. That's going to be the tough part, you know. But, but you need to test that hay. And you don't need to be feeding a bunch of carbohydrates. No oats, no rye. They don't need it. Yep, very good. All right, so uh, our next question comes from Faye out there in Australia. Faye says, can string halt be fixed or cured? My poor little mule fall, falls over sometimes when his sock seizes up and locks. So what is string yeah. halt and can it be yeah. fixed or cured, Steve? Well, it's unfortunate. No, uh, string halt is what it amounts to is, is a tendon that doesn't want to expand and contract and so what the veterinarians usually do is they cut that tendon so that it doesn't contract. What happens is as they go to move their feet, the back foot will kind of jerk a little bit and go back down. And it's, it's an awful thing and it happens to the good, bad, and the uglies. There's no rhyme or reason. Uh, uh, for, for, for the most part that we know, the biggest thing that we consider is what we think it might be is really muddy areas where things are slick and the animals get to run around there and play it and slip and and pull a tendon kind of like us uh you know sprain an ankle or on icy areas or even on asphalt and uh, uh and rocks and stuff and and uh where they can slip and this sort of thing and it makes no difference folks if they got shoes or if they don't have shoes they still got a chance of slipping and they still have a chance of of uh, getting a string halt and, and unfortunately my granddaughter Nat, uh she's in a competition coming up in missouri and i think it's september and uh and the mule that she drawn is a nice mule good mind good disposition really nice good confirmation but unfortunately from day one that she got it it's got string halt and so we're in the middle of kind of a a mess right now because here she is supposed to be competing and she doesn't have a sound animal so that's going to be tough so is there a way to fix string halt kind of a way in that they cut the tendon does that last i wouldn't be in the saddle and i wouldn't be in the harness with them because they got a chance of tripping and falling and you get your trip to the hospital and that's not good very good well we'll give you the news here on exactly what uh, what to expect, even if it's bad news and there's no fix, uh, but then you have the information. And the number one thing, I know that we've got folks, Steve, I know that we have folks watching just trying to learn this whole mule and donkey thing. The number yeah. one piece of advice that you're going to hear Steve Edwards say is learn. Ask the questions and learn. That's the best way you can do right by your animal. And even if the news is not good news, at least you know and you can you can move forward with that. So uh, there you go, Faye. Uh, I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, thoughts to dwell on and think about how you're going to move forward. Uh, Linda, uh, let's see here. Linda's watching. She talked about the Tritocale. Um, Myra, greetings from South California. Always glad to be with you. Gary is watching from Dodson, Louisiana, 90 degrees. Gary says, love your program. Gary, we love hearing that. Thank you so much for those kind words. That's... Uh, that honestly means a lot to us. Um, let's see. Rick is watching from Seaside, Oregon. Neil Campbell. Howdy, guys. Neil and Abby from Peshtigo, Wisconsin. We're glad to have you here, guys. Uh, Steph is watching. Steph says, I was gifted a nice mule. Hey, 
That's a pretty good gift right there. Yeah. I'm, I'm new to mules and having a hard time leading her. She pulls and rears. What can I do to help her easily and softly go forward on the lead? Steph, you are not the only one. That is something that we answer just about every single week when they don't want to do what you want them to do. Why is my mule doing that? Steve, what can Stephanie do? You know, Stephanie, the, the biggest problem with these mules, and, and, and Dave, I have to get this letter to you. I had a, uh, I had a, ca- a guy contact me. And he says, you know, Steve, he says, I've been around mules and horses and cattle all my younger life. And then he got into being on the uh, uh, railroad and became a railroad man and got out of ranching and stuff. And he says, every once in a while, I kind of relive some of them stories. And he said, I saw you on YouTube and I seen you using that come along hitch. And he said, you know, I remember my dad using one of those. And, you know, we're talking a <laughs> hundred years back, you know, almost. I think he said he was 86, something like that. And uh, he said, man, he says, but he says, the way you did it so smooth and easy, that was nice. But going on that, say this, he, he said, I told him about the problem mule video. Mm-hmm. And he said, and he watched the video. I sent it to him. He says, you know, Steve, you don't have it named right. And I said, really? What's, what, what, how should I name it? He said, it should be problem people video. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> problem people. He says, well, you can hear that mule kicking and thrashing in the trailer. And I thought, boy, Steve's going to get his butt kicked on this one. And you went in there, and pretty soon that meal was melting in your hands, and you went out, and you, you did some training and showed the guy, and this buckaroo was watching it, and, and you, he finally got it. But he said, you know, it's the guy on the end of that lead rope that's usually the problem. And I, and I don't mean to shortcut this lady, okay? But before her, somebody put on a wrong halter. Before her, somebody probably put a chain on the halter. Before her, you got that idea? Before her, before her. The mule already knows how to stiffen its neck, already knows how to get around you, okay? But that lead rope, that halter, folks, you cannot do enough of come along work. You can't do enough sur single work. Those two makes your animal soft. Get that word in your, in your mind, in your mind, soft. I had a lady call me. She said they hook up their mules and they had a runaway. They couldn't stop them. And, and she said, we tried all kinds of bits. And I said, ma'am, it's not a matter of bits. It's a matter of building a foundation to get there. You, folks, you don't just put a bit in the mule's mouth and by golly, it's going to work good. No, no, no. You build a foundation. You start from the ground using the come along hitch from the come along hitch to the rope halter from the rope halter to the mule riders martingale, mule riders martingale, the finished bit. So let's go back here. Okay. We don't know what this mule had before it, and it doesn't make any difference. I could care less how abused or how good the mule was. Let's start over again. Forget about the past. Make it be the past at last, and let's go forward. Forgiven, forgotten, go on, all right? So put the come along hitch on. We got a, we got this kit called the ground communication kit. Folks, it's, it's why get in the saddle or why drive or anything if the mule isn't mentally and physically with you okay and that mental and physical that mental is when you bump on that rope and that physical makes the feet stand still stand still first move later okay so that's where i would start you know start with that uh, ground communication kit do your groundwork it's not important to ride it's not important to drive it's important that they first understand who you are, and you can do that on the ground. Very good. That's what you're going to hear over and over and over is uh, get control on the ground uh, so that you are better prepared for riding in the saddle. We've got Mark Miller watching, and he follows up our question on uh, nutrition. He says, what are, what, are, what are your thoughts on feeding corn oil for coat and hoofs. I've heard pros and cons. Corn oil, Steve, this is the first time I've heard of it. Uh, have you heard of this? Oh yeah, we, we used to do it when we were showing. Uh, whether or not it did any good or not, I don't know. It, it, it seemed to do some good, but they had all kinds of new stuff that came out called Shoshin and some of them things like that. Hey Dave, did you get that uh, email I sent you of a guy using a blower? to blow his, his mule off. Oh, <laughs> I, 
I think I did see that one. Instead of using a brush, it's kind of like David and Di in Australia. Yeah. He uses a blower, a weed blower. You know, and this guy had a little hand one, and he's blowing this mule off, and you can see the dust just flying. Well, he asked me in the very beginning, well, what do you think? And I says, well, you know, Dave and Di use it there in, in Australia. And I said, the main thing is to use the come along hitch. And folks, hear this now. This guy's using a blower. It makes a lot of noise. Dust is flying. And you see the mule is standing perfectly quiet. Now, on top of that, the mule's not switching his tail, so he's not irritated. He doesn't have his head up in the air all worried. He's standing perfectly still while this guy takes a blower and blows him, and blows him clean, you know. And then you see the dust just flying. It's, it's great, you know. Yep. Folks will say, oh, he's ridden. Oh, he's been driven. Oh, he's gone packing. He's been up and down the Grand Canyon X number of times. He's gone in the backwoods of so-and-so. Yeah. But then you get him home. And that's hardly the case. You find that you showed me a picture when you when you were in Hawaii of uh, of a gentleman who had the animals tied to a rope and a little twig in the ground. Animal just stood there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what you want to look for, as far as I can understand. What I've learned from you, that's what you want to look for in a mule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They respect it. They respect the halter. You see, like this last lady, there's no respect. People have done some in, in, some some poor communication, and a lot of people think he's been abused. Well, he, yeah, you know, we can abuse. Once we say some harsh words, we can't take them back. That's abuse. Yeah, I'll go along with that. But the same thing with a halter. When you're using a nylon halter on these mules, folks, all you're doing is creating problems. Adjust a halter, make it nice, and then you can go on with better halters later on, you know. But, you know, you can tell a horseman and you can tell a mule person by the halter on the mule's head you know there you go that's the very first place how you can tell very good um all right let's go to our next question here and uh our next question this is uh uh let's see oh it's uh housekeeping well real quick uh Danelle is watching from lafleur oklahoma we've got paul watching from kentucky hot and humid uh, i can vouch for that man when i discovered humidity it was when i was about 12 years old in kentucky uh, cleaning my aunt's car for five dollars and i wondered why am i so wet that was the day i discovered humidity was a thing uh chris says housekeeping question millie's favorite spot to pee is about 10 feet out from her run install uh, mule pee has a unique odor we have gravel over clay mm -hmm. so it drains well any suggestion to diminish or neutralize the odor well here's the thing that urine can be very, very overpowering. So folks, what I don't do is allow them to urinate or to poop in the same place, especially in a stall where you're going to be going in and out. So what I do is I take a car tire and I lay over the top of the place that they're urinating in all the time. And I put it right there. And, and then I, I spring, I take a, a can of baking powder and, uh, and I sprinkle it all around that area, you know, and then that mule starts learning because he doesn't want to deal with getting around that tire. He'll find another place to take and pee and poop. And that's what I do. So that way I keep moving him. I take this 14 or 15 inch tire and I put it down in different places so I can get them to go to a certain place to maybe poop. Because the downside of it, folks, is that when their feet, when they step in it, they've got, that, they've got enough bacteria they have to deal with anyway, but it makes it even more prevalent with the bacteria when they're stepping in peep, uh, in in, uh, in urine and poop all the time, you know. Yep, there you go. Uh, the next question that I got, this one comes from Kathleen. And Kathleen, you had messaged uh, this in a while ago, and we had a couple uh, live streams that we missed, and so we're trying to get cut up on these questions. Kathleen says, howdy, boys. Hello, Kathleen. Nice to see you. I should be working in the garden right now, but I'm not. So Abner has twice been a bit mouthy when he presumably wants food. The first was a few weeks ago when he half-heartedly nibbled my muck boots. The second was this yeah. morning when, because of Red Eagle stayed home today, I did not give him uh, his Hobbit second breakfast half flake for brunch as usual. Second breakfast -ies. Uh He grabbed my overalls midsection with his teeth Ooh. still gently before I also gently but with assertion 
pushed his head away and affectionately called him a silly boy. What are your thoughts? Steve, this is a really good one because this is something yeah. that happens with a lot of mules getting up into the human space. Will you will you share your thoughts here for Kathleen and the rest of us? Yeah, absolutely. Folks, listen, you're the herd leader. These animals are used to herds. Now, what does the herd leader do? If they want to move you, they step in your space. If you're not moving fast enough for them or not going in the direction they want to go, they'll nibble at you. And the downside about it, folks, they can even get to where they bite you or even spin and kick at you. This mule is saying, you're in my space. You're going to do as I want you to do. And they nibble and bite to push you out of the way. And we at first think, oh, he's just hungry. No, 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 no. He says, hurry up and get out of my way so I can get to my hay, okay? That's what he's doing. He's, he's trying to be the top of the pecking order. And he sees that you got the hay, and he's starting to get to the place he's saying, get out of my way. What do I do? I don't smack him in the head. I do yell at him, hey! And I do use the edge of my butt, boots, and I kick him in the shin, you know? Kick him in the shin, because if you whack him with your arms, Anytime you move your arm, they think they're going to get whacked and they get out of the way. So use the edge of your boot, kick them in the shin, kick a little dirt toward them or something like that. But the number one thing is, Dave, don't let them in your space to start with. Yeah. Don't let them in there. Okay. Don't get and when they're coming into your space, you kick a little dirt toward them, you know, or, or, and something like that, and try to get them out of your space. You know, don't let them get in there, folks. So this is going to be a challenge for a lot of people. And the reason I know that is because it is a challenge for me. When we were down at the Andrada Ranch, uh, June of last year, uh, it had been uh, several years since I had been up and close and up close and personal with a mule or a donkey. Uh, I'd been at clinics and things like that, but you know, I was always more like 10 to 20 feet away, social distancing with the mule. Uh, but being at the Andrada Ranch, uh, I walked into the, the, you know, gated area. And there, I don't know, there are like 15 mules in there and they're all curious. They're coming up to you. They want to see what you're doing. And, and so they keep coming up right at, in front of me. And Steve goes, you know, kick them, get them out of your space. And just, like, I just kind of like tap, he goes, no, like you got to get on them. And he was right. Like if I didn't really forcefully kick them and move them away, uh, they wouldn't listen. But as soon as I kind of was a little bit more assertive with the edge of my boot. Uh, they backed mm -hmm. up and I had my space again. And so that was a really difficult thing to do for the first time. Uh, but it becomes easier yeah. over time as you do it more and more and yeah. more, as, as so many things do. Right, Steve? Yeah, well, they get to they get to know their space. You have to start showing them in the very beginning, folks. This is my space. This is your space. You can approach them to the shoulder. They do not do not come into your space at all. They start coming within an arm's difference. If it's arm lengths is your minimum, arm lengths. So you stick your arm out there, they don't come no closer than that. If they do, then be aggressive toward them, folks. Ask, tell, demand, you know, ask them, say, hey, get out of here, that don't yeah. work. Stomp at them a little bit, that don't work. Kick them in the shin with the edge of your boot. You got to, folks, or you'll end up being a piece of, uh, of hamburger that you don't want to be. You know, I can tell you some horror stories. Yeah, we do not want anybody becoming a piece of hamburger. So listen no. to Steve Edwards and uh, don't become a piece of hamburger. I think that's going to be our new t-shirt that we print off. David is watching from 74 degrees in Port Angeles. It's nice and sunny, he says. Carolyn has our next question. Uh, Carolyn, so glad that you're here. She says, I have a 20 year, 20 plus year old mule and I'm trying to get her used to being saddled. She always tries to start bucking with the saddle on her back even before I cinch it up. How do I get her used to being saddled? What a great question. She won't stand still and the minute I put it on, she tries to walk off and buck it off. When I finally do get it on, she'll buck a little again, but we'll finally settle, settle down. I can work her three days and she'll seem to get better, but then she totally regresses the next time and acts like she's never been in the saddle before. Help. Thanks. Um, Steve, is the mule trying to communicate? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. let's hear it. You know, doggone it all. Let's listen, folks. This is important. 20 years old. 20. Everybody's looking for that old mule that's gentle and easy going. This mule is trying to say, hey, I got a problem with what you're doing on my back. That saddle is hurting me. Folks, 
take your mule, go to a good chiropractor and have their back looked at, okay? Folks, take your mule to the dental office and, and have them do the dental work. I cannot tell you uh, how many people have got themselves hurt trying to put the saddle on. Why go there? If they're uncomfortable with the saddle, find out why. Get the mechanical out of the way first. Take your mule, go to see a good doctor, and spend the money, okay? Now, we got a good client in, uh, in Arlington, Texas, Dale. And I told him, he got bucked off twice. And when you're getting as, as old as I am, and he is, uh, it, you don't come up from the ground like you used to, folks. You don't happen. So listen, he finally, after getting bucked off the third time, two times with his horse saddle, and then one time with my saddle, he finally found a guy that was, uh, and, and, and Barbara's writing a, an article on this, I think, right now, mm -hmm. or is it? Yeah, Barbara is, okay? And this, this veterinarian come out and x-rayed, and sure enough, on the scapula, there was a cauliflower-looking place on the scapula, and any time you hit it, this mule blew to pieces. Blew to pieces. So, uh, folks, listen, this mule is saying to this lady, hey, my back hurts. We used to think, okay, tough it up, buddy. We'd jack up a foot, we'd make him do it, okay? It's one thing when they're three years old. It's another thing when they're 20 years old and they're trying to get away from you. They're telling you, I got a problem. So many people, Dave, just throw any saddle on there and they think they're gonna be all right. Here's this lady, all she wants to do is go for a ride, but all the meal's trying to say is, I don't wanna go for a ride because when I do, I'm hurt. Yeah. You know, you know I'm hurting. And, and folks, it's not worth putting a saddle on. If they're trying to buck it off, they're trying to tell you something. I, hey, listen, it's important. I'd like to talk to this lady more. Yeah. So she goes and sees a vet. We'd like to hear what's going on. What did the vet have to say? Have them check it all out. Not just a chiropractor, but folks, when you do this thing, especially, 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 have them x-ray the scapula. I was talking to a veterinarian today, Dave, veterinarian. And we were talking about the scapula, and then just above that is that fiber, you know. And I, I said to him, I said, he said, I'm having a problem right now. And I said, I said, Mike, take and put your hand up underneath the saddle, pull the head, the head around, and see if it's not pinching your hand. And I'm going to tell you, that saddle, the name brain of that thing, you're going to get your hand pinched. So Mike's going to come back and get back to me. But if this lady that's having this problem, if she would go over and above, go get a good veterinarian, spend some money, help this mule out. This mule will give you a, a, a lot of hours. She's still got 10, 15 years left, folks. You know, 20 years old is not that old on a mule. Yeah, that's great. Carolyn, thank you so much. We would love to, we would love to follow up with you. So uh, yeah. get the visit. Feel free to give Steve a call if you have more questions. Uh, but let's hear how things are progressing and let's give Please. some folks a real life case study uh, so they can take what you're learning and they can apply it to their uh, situation. We've got Ginger watching from Georgia. Hotter than Hades today. Ginger, we know a little bit about that out here in the Valley of the Sun. It's good to have yeah. you here with us. Kathleen says, thanks for asking definitions, Dave. Kathleen, I have your back. Um, let's see. Thoughts and prayers go out to the string heart, mule, and human parent. Appreciate that, Kathleen. You are so sweet. Um, Steve, real quick, I wanted to let two, before we keep going into the questions, there's two, thing, th two things that I wanted to let folks know about. Um, the first thing is that tomorrow we are doing a free event where yeah. we are talking about all about the donkey. Several weeks ago, we talked all about the mule. Tomorrow, we're talking all about the donkey. What are a couple couple things that we're going to discuss tomorrow? I'm going to put a link for folks to sign up, but what are a couple things that we're going to discuss uh, that folks want to know about the donkey? Well, we're going to talk about hoof care. If there's an equine out there that has a bad hoof, it is that donkey. And especially, uh, Dave, when we get a chance to see uh, James Montana and see his donkey, it's got it's got really bad hooves on it. And uh, so we're gonna talk about the care of hooves. We're also gonna be talking about how important it is for nutrition, especially for a donkey. Listen folks, donkeys can grass founder very, very, very easy. And so it's important that we learn about nutrition and keep them safe 
from being too fat. And those fat pockets can be detrimental to them. The heat can go down into their feet. And if you see a poor donkey with his hoof fluffed off, folks, it is ugly. They literally have to hang with a special net from the ceiling to keep them from standing on there. And folks, it, it comes right down to us. We, we are their friend. We're the herd leader. We got to take care of them. And if we just throw them out on pasture, then, then no wonder he's obese and no wonder he's having a problem. So that's another thing, yeah. Dave. But I love, hey, and we're going to have a special guest too. Ah, uh -huh. wonderful. Very good. We're going to have a lot of fun. So I put a link in the comment section for y'all to uh, get registered. I want to let you know about that. And then I also wanted to say that after much request, after much buildup, after much story, uh, we have finally published the brand new ultralight and the brand new heritage saddles right. on the queen valley yep. mule ranch steve uh, i'm showing them the ultralight right now anything that you want to say about this saddle right here so folks can know well right now folks you see the ultralight which is only 20 pounds all leather we just uh brought in a bunch imported a bunch of leather from argentina and it is first class nice and I've been riding this saddle now for quite a while, uh, and, and it's really very, very, very comfortable. And also, Dave, we've had requests for padded seats. So right now we're getting our first padded seat done, and uh, our customer is going to get that. But right now, the people who have these, uh, this ultralight saddle, and I mean this is ultralight, all leather, 20 pounds yeah uh matter of fact dave pingali the coffee man our mm -hmm. favorite coffee, he's got one and just loves it you know we've very got good. some other people have it too you know very good we released that one and then we also released the heritage now we're getting some better pictures in here uh, this one is just it's fresh off the production line so steve talk to us real quick about the heritage folks want to know about it well what this heritage is my original saddle dave that i designed for me and my cowboys here on the ranch the original one when we finally come to this design this tree where the rigging plates need to be everything about it what we, since we were working cowboys we needed strength we needed to be able to be strong so we put rawhide around the tip of the horn and we put rawhide over top of the cannel and just to kind of give it a little bit of gingerbread we added barbed wire trim around it and it mm -hmm. really makes for a good looking saddle I think, is it the one you're showing? Is that the one that's in the shop right now? It is the one that's in the yeah. shop right now. Yeah. Well, we got a bunch more good, better pictures of coming different ways. And I think, Dave, the new website, you know, it would be kind of neat to have a, a video, you know. Hey, did I say new website? Ah, you may have let the cat out of the bag, but you know what? Folks are going to be really excited to see it. We're doing a lot of really Ooh. cool things. So lots yeah. of great stuff happening. New saddles. Yeah. New new clinics, uh, new website coming in the uh, in the coming weeks here. It's going to be a lot of fun, uh, but really, uh, it all comes back to y'all. Y'all make this yeah. thing happen. Y'all make this work. If it wasn't for y'all, yeah. uh, Steve would still be working a body right. shop, uh, still running a body shop, uh, pushing cars in and out. Uh, but there there is such an amazing community of people who have mm -hmm. said, you know what? Not all equine is all equine. The mule and the donkey, they are different, and we're going to learn about them. Y'all are the ones making this happen. So we're happy to share that with you. If you are watching, we've got another 15, 20 minutes here. Uh, and I just want to say welcome. Uh, put your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like in the comment section. We want to know you. We want to meet you. And uh, it would be just fantastic to be able to see you pop up in the comment section. Uh, the second thing is if you have any questions, we're going to do our best to get through all the questions today. If you've got any Put them in the comment section. We want to hear from you. And then the last thing, and this is a really big thing. It's 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 small for you, but it's big for us. And that's just continuing to share. Copying the link on YouTube, sharing that with friends and family. On Facebook, there is a button that literally says share. Pressing that button, sending it to your profile. If people following you are interested in the mules and the donkeys, we want to make sure that they know that you have found an amazing community of folks uh, who just go out of their way to help one another, and uh, we're glad to be members of that. Uh, we've got Linda, uh, who is watching, and she asked the question, do you advocate 
teaching voice commands to your mule during ground training. Things like walk on or back or come up and whoa. I don't tend to chat with Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule, but seems to me voice commands would make sense. Steve, I think I've heard you talk about this. What would you say to Linda? Voice commands are great for harness animals. And the biggest reason is, folks, when you've got that long line going to a bit, there's a ton of leverage there. And most folks are pulling on those lines rather than moving, slightly moving. So that's where they like to use a lot of words. That G, ha, uh, whoa, back up, slow walk, you know. Uh, yeah, I use those words all the time. And it really impressed the judges because my hands never moved. My hands stayed in the same place with my, with my wrist down by my knees. And uh, I could drive six mules at one time and you hardly see my hands move. Does it work? Yes. The problem is, folks, you're carrying on conversations with them. Don't do that. Oh, good for you, uh, one-eyed mule. No, 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 no. Whoa, get up, come G, come ha. Not, okay, now let's turn to the right. Okay, you got the idea? Okay. So do I carry on a conversation? No. When I am in the saddle, you don't hear me say a word. I am perfectly quiet. If I do not long drive, long line, and folks, Okay, I don't, uh, and I try not to advocate it too much, mainly because all that leverage on a mule's mouth is way too much. If you are barely turning your wrist, barely moving it around, yeah, all right, doing it correctly. But this is what I see. It makes me sick watching them on video, on YouTube stuff, where people are pulling on them like this. Look, you're not driving a train. You're trying to soften the mouth. So what do I prefer? I do not prefer long lines. I do prefer a sur single, starting with a halter first, come from the nose. If you train a mule, you start from the nose. You train a donkey, you start from the nose. So what I do is I put them in a sur single, I put a halter on them, I put some strings on them, and by the way, Myra in California, yeah. she's sending some awesome pictures She's doing a great job of training. We got awesome. the pictures to put on the internet and stuff, you know. She's awesome. doing great, you know, but she's using a surf single. Folks, you don't need to drive them. You don't need to. You can surf single them first, get them soft, so when you get in the harness <coughs> or you get in the saddle, they know what to do. They're soft enough, okay, but they're not soft enough when you got long lines and you're pulling on them. Very good. Uh, we've got uh, Tracy asking a real quick um, follow-up. We talked about string halt earlier. Uh, Tracy says, is string halt the same or different to stifle lock? Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Yep. There we go. Uh, let's see. Jana says, hey, Steve, can you tell me about beer pulp? What makes, will that make Ella fat? Only give her a cup in the morning and at night. She doesn't need to gain any weight. Uh, beer pulp, will that make her fat? Beer pulp, I've, I usually feed, she may be talking about Oh, she meant beet, beet pulp. pulp, beet pulp, yes, beet pulp. Okay, beet pulp. She corrected fantastic. it. The beet, beet pulp is fantastic. Uh, beet pulp, <laughs> beer pulp. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it over here because I'm, right. I'm trying to put it, it I'm, sorry. Pulp, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You use it dry and stuff, no problem. Beet pulp, no, beet pulp, can it put a little weight on it? Yeah, it could, okay. But the main thing it does is it cleans them out. Now, can it put weight on them? Yeah, it can. You overfeed it, you can. I tell you what, I usually feed about a quart can wet down about three times a week. You know, that's it. If I've got one that's that's really top of the loin, uh, the, the, the top line is really bad, I'll add more feed, I'll, and I'll feed it morning and night. But it takes a lot of beet pulp, a lot of beet pulp to make one fat. There we go. Uh, thank you, Jenna. Appreciate it as always. Uh, David Scholl, we've gone international again. Uh, ask the question, uh, what size pen do you keep a mule in? Uh, in my ranch, are 10 by 20. Each stall is 10 by 20. So 10 foot wide, 20 foot long. There you go. Awesome. Simple, easy. 
Makes a lot of sense. Dottie is watching from Mayor AZ with a shower. Hopefully you can send some of those showers down here to the uh, to the Maricopa County area. We would take it gratefully accepted. Uh, Let me Bill, give you a reason. What's that? Let me give you a reason for 10 by 20. Oh, okay, go for it. Okay, the reason for 10 by 20 is it's small enough that they can move around if they can get big, they can they can do some small enough that they can they can uh, have a place to stay big enough that they can move around and roll. But here's the thing: it's small enough that they want to come out of that corral. They want to meet you at the gate. So you get one that's hard to catch. You put them in a small pen. It changes things. But the nice thing about those small pens, they're easy to clean. But you can you, they they want to meet you at the gate. And every morning, but boy, my mules are right there. Let's go. You know. There you go, folks. Small pen, ready, meeting you at the gate, ready to go. Uh, Bill says, we have not had good success with a product called DAC4, uh, DAC, four-way joint supplement for locking stifles. Not sure what the name, if that's the same as string hold, but help my mini John. We have had good success with a product called DAC, a four-way joint supplement. Have you used any supplements or anything like that, Steve? You know, I haven't seen these supplements been worth a darn other than, other than uh, you know, just a good vitamin and minerals. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. And that sort of thing. So I, uh, no, I, I don't know of any that really work good. I used to feed conglosamine, chondritin for joints and stuff. And, you know, Stacy, I had it on her. I had probably had her on it for three, four years. Didn't see a bit of difference with it but hey folks if you're having good luck for it good you know good for you yeah. yeah that's one thing we'll say hey we're just going to tell you what's worked for us what we've got experience but a lot of times we we've learned from some other folks hey this is wound up working real well so uh go at it and maybe that's worth giving a try there Faye. uh ross is watching 90 degrees in emmett idaho glad to have you here wash james is watching from holden missouri it's 91 temperature uh new york i've had my horses a handful of stabilized a handful of stabilized uh rice bran what are your thoughts on that stabilized rice bran you know, rice rice brand is really brand is really good for for cleaning the digestive system. For any, you know, they're always nibbling on the ground for something and sucking up dirt, so it does add up. But you know, anytime you can feed a brand uh, rice brand, uh, that that's good. Awesome. It, it does help, just like uh, beet pulp, clean out your digestive system. Very good. Awesome rice brand. Uh, we have got uh, trace. Uh, from Queensland, Australia. Yaha! Howdy, partners. Good to be here. We're good to have. We're glad to have you here, Trace. Uh, let's see, Shelley uh, from Sook, British Columbia, Canada. Warm around 75 degrees. We've gone international again. Uh, New York says, "I love your channel. I've learned a lot about tack and fitting to my mutton withered horse. Many thanks." Well, hey, we're glad to help you. Thank you so much. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe over there on YouTube. Uh, Yolanda, me watching in the dark after midnight. Yolanda, we love you. We're glad that you're here. You've taken us international all the way to the Netherlands, and we appreciate it. Andrew. Andrea says, thanks for the tire trick for shifting P spots. We're glad to help you there, Andrea. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Neil Campbell says, Steve, my Abby mule loves getting the shop vac used on her. So we'll need to get some video footage of that too yeah. there, Neil. Yeah. Send, it on, send it on over. We'd love to see that. Uh, let's see. David over on YouTube says, how do I get my mammoth jack interested in in my mare. I don't think we've had that question. Steve, I'm interested to hear what your answer is. How do I get my jack uh, mammoth interested in my mare? Well, my first question is this. Has your jack bred a Jenny? And if so, folks, I don't know what it is. I've had all kinds of people tell me this, that, and the other over the years. But if they bred a Jenny, you'll have a hard time to get them to breed a mare. Now, the next thing I do is it helps to have a teaser. So I used to have a real small little mule uh, uh, as a mini, and he used to get all excited when mares uh, would start to come into heat. And he would bray at them and nibble at them and this sort of thing, and then mares would come into heat 
and then I could breed them with the jack. So a lot of guys use the Shetlands uh, to get one to come into heat. That's one way. Now then here's the last one, the third way. And that is you can have your veterinarian give them a, uh, a shot. And I can't think of the name of it right now. I'll draw it a blank. But they can, that'll bring them into heat. But the big problem is, is getting the jack interested. And here's what you got to do, folks. Uh, if it was me, I would just AI your mare and do it that way. You do better with an AI than you do live cover any day. An AI, artificial insemination, makes a whole, a whole lot easier on a mare. Some of these mares, the, uh, they don't like it when the jack goes to Bray and, hey, hey, look here, look what we got, <laughs> you know, and that sort of thing. No, 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 you know, oh, Jess heard me, he come in, you know. Uh, so so uh, uh, here, here's the thing, folks, uh, if you've already bred a Jenny, it's gonna be awful tough to, to breed that, that mare, it is. Um, just AI them. Folks, don't keep a jack around unless you're going to do a lot of breeding. These jacks can be a handful, and these jacks can also hurt you, you know. I've been knocked down by a lot of good jacks, you know, intentionally. So uh, there's not much you can do, partner. Just, just AI them to a good jack and, and, and call her good. There we go. Uh, next question. This one's from Trace. says, uh, how do I order one of those uh, caps? Well, we we uh, love ourselves some Eric Lynn over at Mountain Ridge Gear. And uh, earlier this week, we sent out an email with uh, with a link to a video that Steve and Eric did together. Um, Y'all can go check out at the link I put in the comment section, Mountain Ridge Gear. Eric's got some great stuff there. Get yourself a hat, but go check out his other products. Buy some of his other products, some fantastic bags. Uh, Steve advocates saddlebags, um, all sorts of really great, uh, really great stuff. And Eric loves the donkey and and uh, is just uh, become a great friend of, of uh, Mule Ranch. So we're real grateful yeah. to have him. Yeah, Steve? So it's not that I advocate... Saddlebags, I don't. I don't. Sorry, like sorry, bags, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good bags for packing. He's got yeah. bags for packing that's way beyond any packing that you've ever seen. I mean, the man was in the military. Uh, he's packed in the military and stuff. So the bags that he's put together are tough. They handle mildew. Uh, they handle rain and stuff. And most of all, they handle that meat when you go to pack it out. There we go. So yeah, go check Mountain Ridge Gear. Uh, tell tell Eric we sent you, and uh, that that'd be real great. Um, Neil says, okay, my mule will quietly drop her head and rub her forehead on my chest. I've always thought of that as affection. Is that not the case, Steve? Uh, you know, folks, it can be infection a little bit. You know, they don't mind a, a scratch on the ear and stuff, and some some rubbing and petting on them. That's good. But you want to be careful, folks, because I tell you, I used to think it was fun to have my horse rub on me and have my horse. Now, I said horse. Y'all hear that word? Horse. I was riding horses. That's when my standards were a lot lower. But I had this horse would rub on me. And I had this old cowboy say to me, he says, son, one of these days, you're not going to like the end result of that. And you know what day he was right. We was looking for a lost kid up in the superstitions. And I was looking down a mine tunnel. And this horse decided it was time to be close to me. And he rubbed on me, shoved me down in that mine tunnel. You know, and uh, you know that's a bad feeling to be flying in the air with the latest, greatest of ease on my trapeze. No, it didn't feel good when I hit. You know. Uh, anyway, long story short, folks, it's the very be it can be a, it can be the very beginnings of a mule that's wanting to take over and push you around. You know. Uh, I don't let them in my in my space. I can come into their space. They're not allowed to come into mine. And if I set that right off the bat, the day I really need them to get out of my space, I'm going up the side of a mountain and I'm walking, trying to lead my mule. I don't have him jumping ahead and lunging. I got the mule following me nice and quiet to go up there. And there'll be a day that you do have to get off and you're gonna wish that they understood their space. Yep, 
Very good. Great question. Love being able to answer it. Uh, Jack is watching from Johannesburg, checking in. 72 degrees and cloudy. Butch is watching from Kennewick, Washington, where it's an even 100 degrees right there on the button. Thank you, Butch. Kathleen uh, is watching. Oh, that was a reply back there. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, who had the question earlier, uh, she said that she will follow up with us. So that's great. Glad to hear that. Um, let's see here. Marlene says, I have a donkey with bad hooves. I just found a farrier. She trimmed her on Saturday. So that's got to feel fantastic. Uh, yeah. getting that done. Steve, uh, is the, is the hoof a great hoof on the donkey? No, it's, it's a horrible hoof. Here's the problem folks is it's like a jar. You know, the hoof is a lot like a glass or a jar. And as all that manure and stuff packs up in there, you start getting bacteria, and you got a problem. And and you can have you can have a lot of problem with uh, uh, with a lot of bacterial diseases. Okay. And here's the thing, folks: don't let these pig people tell you you don't have to trim them and you don't have to put shoes on them. Dave, I was watching a video of a guy today. And he's a trainer and he's nationally known. And he says, I never put shoes on my mules. And he says, I, the problem is, is when they get into the rocks and stuff, that it's slick and they can move around. And if I, and then he kind of changed a little bit. He says, we're getting ready to go back in the mountains for a pack trip. And we're going, going to be going to a lot of granite. So I always put shoes on the front. Well, people put shoes on the front because of all the weight, the neck and the head and this sort of thing on the front. But guess what? I want you all to all take the tires off the back of your car and I want you to try going down the road with just front tires. That's what you're doing. That mule does not have the drive off the hind quarters. That donkey doesn't have the drive off the hind quarters to move them forward. Okay. And so they'll start getting tired feet, start getting tender feet, and they're not going to want to drive off their hind end. They'll elevate the back. They'll pull with their front end. What just happens with the, when they elevate their shoulder? It hollows out their back. So folks, you may have fixed, Dave and I talk about this all the time, you may have fixed one little problem, but you got five more that you created a bigger problem. And besides that, and this is one of my pet peeves in the day when it yeah. comes down to feet. Folks, yeah. mule's feet are contracted. In other words, the back of the hoof is coming in like this. And when the back of the hoof comes in like this, what happens? The frog is not healthy. If the frog is not healthy, what happens? We do not have the blood that flows up and down the lake. All right? Don't let a horse trainer in a mule costume tell you you don't have to take and do that on a mule. Put shoes on them. Try that at the Grand Canyon. All right? Try that when it's eight degrees above zero, it's slick. Oh, I don't put shoes on because it's too slick. Guess what we do? We put shoes on. Why is that? Because we put borium on the shoes so that it bites. Because slick shoes or no shoes, you're going to go sliding. And listen, you don't want to slide at the Grand Canyon. Okay? Borium, folks, on the shoe helps bite into the rock helps bite into the snow, helps bite into the mud, but especially when it's slick, that volume is like cleats. Hey, Dave, you're a baseball man, aren't you? I am a baseball man. Is uh, the bottom of their shoes, are they smooth? They are not smooth. Gosh, what, what do they do? What do they do, Dave? Well, they 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 put some uh, they put some spikes on the bottom there so they get good grip and they can uh, they can get a nice jump on the ball. There you are. Dave's a baseball man, folks. Now, let me That's tell right. you, you know, think about this. You think about this. You go out there barefooted. I don't want none of you all, I don't want none of you to put shoes on this next week. And I want you to walk around barefooted and tell me how long it takes. We're going right. to get some emails of folks oh. saying, Steve, my feet are hurting. My, yeah. I Come did on, your, no, your no-shoe challenge, Steve. I didn't wear shoes all week. It hurts. Yeah, well, you know, come on, folks. Let's, let's do some common sense here. Common sense tells me that if we got a contracted heel, we're not going to have a healthy leg. We got no leg, we got no foot. Yes, your donkey's foot can even be real tiny and small. 
But guess what you can do? Dave, old Uncle Bud used to take car tires yeah. and cut them out with a saw and made little tiny shoes for his little tiny mules, mm -hmm. and he nailed two nails in them. And the mules were happy, you know? Yeah. They, they were healthy. They started getting their foot back, you know? It's, it's amazing. It can be done, folks, you know? Your donkey has the worst hoof on an equine. And especially if you get the older kind that in the quarters, they kind of they kind of got a loop, you know, kind of like this. And it comes around and then it loops in and comes around. You see the old mule shoes used to go like that, you know. Well, we try we are trying to breed out, and it comes from the donkey, we're trying to beat out, breed out that sorry foot. A lot of people say, Oh, look. That foot is really hard and hardly cracks. It's not the cracking, folks. Look at those mules, especially on the back feet. They're down on their heels. They're down on their bulbs. And they're, you're beating them to death. Take care of your mule. Take care of your donkey. So if you all can't tell, Steve's passionate about the hoof, and it's because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And inevitably, uh -huh. whenever we talk about the hoof, whenever we talk about shoeing on the mule, on the donkey, uh, there's folks who will say you don't need to shoe them, and you know we'll just tell you, since 1981, uh, done it every which way. So many mistakes, uh, damaged yep. so many good animals. Uh, yep. It didn't have to, and uh, and what you will find is complete and total honesty here on this program because we want you to learn. Uh, Steve wants you to learn from his mistakes. That's why we do this yep. program. So we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Uh, on the donkey program it will be available uh, to watch later so make sure you get um, signed up let's try and get through the rest of these questions here uh, let's see Sam and Renee Crawford hey Steve I tried to send some pics to you but I don't think they went through we're doing good up here in Willow Alaska we just yeah. bought a mammoth jack by the way that's fantastic. We love hearing that. So, uh, Steve, that. maybe reach out to them. Let's get some pictures here. Kristen is watching yeah. from Grand Forks, North, North Dakota. Glad to have you here, Kristen. Uh, you can have our rain all day, she says. Well, we'll take it. Each week this past month, we've had four to eight inches of rain. Ooh. More on the way with 93 degrees and 72 degree humidity. We have a draft mule, a sweetheart, sensitive, and Steve, smart. She received an injury to the hip area, had a chiropractor over to put hip in, and we have been massaging, massaging essential oils, equity supplement, and she is improving. Glad to hear that. What is a good way to help exercise and build her muscle tone back while she continues to heal? We will listen to voice command. Uh, she will listen to voice commands. She leads well, rides well, packs, and she can drive. We've only had her for six months. She's 15 years old and cannot wait to do more with her. And her buddy is a 16-year-old draft. He is even smarter. So she wants to build up some muscle here after this mule, uh, after this hip injury. What can she do to build that muscle? Sir Single. Simple words. Sir Single. Folks, oh, wait a minute, Steve. How does Sir Single work? How does it build up muscle? All right, folks. When the animal is framed up, Top of the hip, top of the wither, top of the head, straight across, framed up. When they're framed up, that means they're driving off their back end. It means it rounds out their back. And when it does, it works on those muscles in the hip. It works on the muscles of the back. And it works on the muscles of the shoulder because now your mule is traveling correctly. Okay? Sir Single is the best thing. I'm telling you, folks. Sir Single Work keeps your mule tuned up. Sir Single Work will help them drop their head, drive off their hind quarters. I see it time and time again when I look on YouTube and some of these other stuff on the internet, Dave. People yeah. got a hold of the bridle, they got their head in the air, it hollows out their back, and they're pulling on their front end. They don't realize, again, they've got one thing fixed, but they're creating five more problems, okay? So Sir Single Work, put them in a Sir Single, Turn her loose. Let her go on her own. Let her walk and this sort of thing on her own. As she progresses mm -hmm. and she gets to where she's framed herself up and she's doing real nice, mm -hmm. three, six, nine, twelve. So she goes by the gate three times, framed up, looking good, to the right and through the left, we quit. Then the next time we come in, she goes by that gate six times, does good, framed up even better, we quit after six times. Now we come to nine. 
Now she's in there in the pen and she's going by and she's got her head framed up, balanced and framed up, hind end up underneath her, framed up nice, nine times, we quit. Now the next time she comes in, we're gonna do 12. And after that, it's, it's you can do whatever you wanna do. You can make them trot, you can, you can make them go walk, you can make even make them canter. But you see, now they've framed themselves up, they have respect for the halter, you start with the halter first, then the mule rider's martingale, then the, the finish bit, the trail rider bit. And you see, by doing that, folks, then, that gets your mule respectful of the bridle, that gets your mule uh, respectful of, of the handler, they get themselves all framed up, they get their body physically and mentally ready to go. And folks, I would do the same thing if it was a two-year-old baby or a 32-year-old grandma uh, mule, all right? I would do it, the same thing. I use a Sir Single pretty much every single day, you know? And when I, when I was training a lot of mules, I could train six to 10 mules at a time in a Sir Single and have them halter broke and focusing on the bit, focusing on the saddles, everything in less than six months. That's awesome. The next question, that Steve, we're past four. Do you have a few extra minutes or do you need to get going? No, if you do, Dave, I'm in good shape. I see it's a quarter after four. I'm fine. Unless okay. You, I know you're pretty busy, you know, right now. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Um, we will, uh, we've will. we got a few more questions that I want to get through. Uh, so we'll just hustle through them. And, and folks, sure. uh, if you have anything, throw them in there. Hopefully I'll be able to see them before we're done. This next question, this one comes from Jordan. She sent this in over email. She says, I recently bought three mules. Uh, two are sweet and easy to catch. One is hard to catch and will not let you touch the ears or hooves and I cannot get the come along on her. I have the problem mule DVD and have watched it a few times. What else can I do to get to touch her ears and get the come, alo come along rope on her? Okay, folks, how do we get, we, we always gotta look at why are the ears hard to touch? The majority of the time is because people have used the wrong bridle and put the bit too much up in their mouth. So when they go to pull a bridle up over top of the ear, it bumps their mouth they throw their head, and people think it's an ear shy problem, it's not. Now the mule, years later, or even weeks later, has got a tool that says, no, you're not gonna hurt me, and they use it as a tool to get around you, okay? Just keep them doing it. So, what would I do? That mule is going to go in a 10 by 20 stall. That mule is gonna to get to where it needs me. Now, if I wanted to shortcut it, I could put her in a squeeze chute and I could put it on, but you don't need to do that. You put them in a 10 by 20 stall and then every time take her out in a round pin and, take, an, and uh, take the rope and just toss it at her. Toss it at her hip, Top, toss it at her, at her shoulder, toss it at her head. And pretty soon you got that rope hanging over her ears. Now, let's go back, let's go back. Can you take, and this is important to know, can I take and rub on the nose, rub up on the face, and then rub on the ears? Can I rub on the ears without any bridle, any rope or anything, just my hands? Can I rub around the face without anything? That's the first question I would wanna ask. Awesome, very good. Well, I sent Jordan a follow-up. We'll see what she says if she gets back to us here uh, in, the, uh, in the next couple days. Uh, go ahead. I also mention we yeah. have a video uh, on Earshy Mule that's right we do yeah and you can watch this little girl she don't weigh 90 pounds sopping wet if that you know and she's got a ornery mule she's dealing with and this little bugger he was he was tough and you can see how she gets the bridle and stuff on but going back it's usually folks again we created a problem and then now you've inherited it so start first can you rub the ears and stuff there we go. Um, I'm going to put a link in the comment section to the Ear Shy Mules video so y'all can check that out. The next question that I've got, this one comes from um, Lynn. Lynn had a pretty long question, so I parsed it down to just the essentials. She says, um, the do my donkey is pulling lead out of pulling the lead out of my hands to try and get to the grass. I've got problems loading into the trailer. How do I get the donkey to cross water, especially deep water? My donkey is 13-2. So we've got trying to get to grass, pulling the lead out of hand. We've got problems loading into the trailer and getting the donkey to cross water, especially deep water. Steve. 
Well, going back to the halter again, Dave, going back to ground communication, folks, you can't do enough of it. Listen, these mules and donkeys don't need to be grazing all the time. People take them out for walks like they're walking their dog and they let them graze. Now, here's the problem. That's what they do naturally anyway. They naturally want to graze and eat, but don't allow them. Once you have a hand on them and a halter, no more eating. We're done. Not even for little breaks out there, folks. None. Okay. So let's go back. Uh, let's go back. Ground communication, the ground communication kit with the DVD, the problem mule, and with the, the come along rope and the rope halter to adjust. That's what you need to have. All right. And that'll make it good. What kind of halter is she using now, Dave? I'd be interested to know. Okay. Uh, and then she can start doing her ground communication. Listen, folks, it's not important to cross the water until they respect the come along hitch. It's not important to cross a bridge until they respect the come on hitch. The video shows me working with a cowboy with a buckaroo, and it shows how I helped him through. And like I was telling you earlier, the guy that had watched the video, he said, Steve, you should re not name it. Not problem you, but problem person, okay? Folks, these animals don't have problems until we open a gate, and then it's up to you to use the correct stuff. So the ground communication, video that's the way to do it very good awesome thank you for that uh let's see uh next question this one's all about kicking uh mary says help my yearling mule <laughs> it's not funny that he got kicked it's just help my yearling mule hates my boyfriend really bad she has kicked him several times. What can I do? He might be sniffing something there. That yearling mule might be sniffing something on him that he, <laughs> that he doesn't he like. My friends, maybe yeah. the mule telling you something here. You know? We, uh, yeah, right. Uh, no, in all seriousness, we no, want to keep things no. safe. I just read that and I thought I, I just got yeah. a picture in my head. Uh, what would we say to help Mary out here? Well, I would say Mary. Uh, you know, for one thing, why are, are you allowing the, the yearling to be in the, anybody's space? You should have full control over that yearling with your lead rope, full control. If he spins and kicks somebody, you need to get your timing. So as soon as you see the ears, get this in your mind. The mule is going to telegraph with the nose and the ear first says, I'm going to kick you. You need to be aware as a rider and as a handler on the ground that you need to correct the problem. And again, the come along hitch, the rope halter, the, the, that, that uh, DVD, problem meal, that ground communication kit. Folks, you cannot overdo groundwork. You need to do a lot of it. It's what it's going to do. It's going to get you in timing with the animal. You're down face to face where you can see it. You're down where he can see you. So here it is, folks. You'll learn to use your hands and your body so that the mule, the donkey says, I understand what you want. So there you go. Or find another boyfriend. <laughs> That's good, folks. Uh, we all will say this just about every broadcast at least once. If you have the come along rope, great. If you have the rope halter, fantastic. If you've got the problem mule video, good for you but you need to have all three. If you do not have all yeah. three, you're selling yourself short. And um, it's come to the point where we have folks who will get one thinking, okay, I'll just, I'll just get the one. And then inevitably they're reaching out, they're saying, hey, I need to get the other two. I just wanna read a couple things real quick. Uh, you need to have all three pieces. Um, yeah. uh, Charles says, would recommend for anyone starting out with a not so sure mule, this rope halter and come along rope work great. And the video is informative. Rhonda says, best purchase I ever made. I was working with an unhandled mini mule. And with this purchase, I've made incredible progress with him. Come along rope is incredible. And the rope halter and DVD are great. Greg says, working with the rope halter, outstanding. The come along rope is the best tool I've ever used for mule training. The response is amazing. I would recommend the ground foundation starting kit for anyone with a mule. You won't be disappointed. And that goes for the donkey too. We really do not come on here to push product. Steve no. did not get into doing this to create product, to, to sell product. Um, there was a need. Steve had his own need. He filled that need, realized other folks were having the same need. Now here we are. 30 years later, 
no. making sure that you have what you need. We won't come on here pushing product. I'm telling you, you need to have the ground foundation starting kit. And matter of fact, if you're still watching yeah. and if you have the ground foundation starting kit, what would you say? Put it in the comment section. Tell folks well, if yeah. you believe they need to have this kit. You're going to hear from real folks telling you exactly what I'm telling you. You've got to have this if you do not have it. All three of them work in tandem. You sell yourself short if you only get one of them. And uh, yeah. and I know I know that's what Steve would say. It's Steve's store. Yeah. So I'll say it for him. You need to have all three. Uh, we got a couple more questions here. Kiki sent in a message. Says, hey, Steve. Hey, Dave. Oh, I'm watching all right. Question. I've heard it said that if you're planning on getting a donkey, you must get two because they are social animals and they will get lonely. Is that a fact or is that a myth? I ask mm -hmm. because donkey mule rescues often require a double adoption. Thank him for being here and for us and praise God, Susan, as well. This was from a little bit ago when we had a last minute incident where Susan had gotten into a, a car accident. She was fine. She, everybody's fine. Susan got a new yep. car out of it. We're all yep. good. Uh, yep. So what would you say there to Kiki? Uh, you know, you don't need another animal, folks. I cannot tell you, Dave, how many people have contacted me and said my 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 mule was lonely, my donkey was lonely, so I bought him a goat, or I bought him a Shetland pony, or I bought him another mule or something. And now here's the problem: <laughs> they can't go anywhere without the goat. You know, they can't go anywhere without their other buddy because the other animal throws a fit. You are the herd leader. Period. When it's just you, folks, you'll get along a lot better. So when you have several animals together, you better know how to communicate. You better know how to use that halter work because when that one decides he's going to drag you back to the corral to be with his buddies, you're going to say to yourself, oh my goodness, what did I get my hands in for? They do not need to have, uh, I'm not going to get into a whole lot more things in here, but they don't need to have another animal, folks. Even though somebody may tell you they do, listen, they, they don't. You know, I have been around hundreds, thousands of animals. And I can tell you that within minutes, I can have that mule wanting to be my best buddy or that donkey to be my best friend in a matter of minutes, folks. It doesn't take long for them to see leadership. Very good. Uh, next question I got here. This one's from Julie. Simple. Can you cross tie a mule? So number one, what is cross tying? And number two, can you do it? Cross tie is where you have two ropes coming from post right to left and they, you use a nylon halter and you snap the snaps into the side and they're there. Dr. Robert Miller is probably one of the most renowned veterinarians in the world, written book after book. And uh, he says, I've never been hurt so bad as when I had a mule in cross ties. Folks, it's too much stress on the mule and they don't like nylon halters to start with. That creates even more pressure get them used to a come along hitch, they'll stand still. Remember Dave, the picture I sent you of the horse tied to a stick? Mm -hmm. Listen folks, those animals will stand perfectly quiet when they learn how to stand still, then you're a trainer. Then you know how to do. Anybody can teach one to move, not everybody can teach one to stand still and quiet. And folks, that's where the ground communication kit works. That's where it works. That's great. Uh, this is the last question I have, then I'll survey the comments just to make sure we got to everything. Uh, Dusty asked the question, do you use a rope halter for lead pack mules? On that lead pack mule, do you use a rope halter? I do not use any halter but a rope halter. Okay. I have a finished halter that has a braided nose pan, but for the most part, folks, when you leave that corral, the monsters are out there. They're out there to eat mules, and every mule thinks that. So I want all the communication value I can have. And you can see it at Bishop, and you can see my mules running. None of them have chains on them. All of them have adjusted rope halters because they respect that rope halter. I use the rope halter for putting them in the trailer, for leading them and everything. Now, when I am first training one, I'm using my come along from the saddle, dallying and undallying, teaching one where to be. 
but I don't use any halters but a rope halter and a braided noseband halter. And of course, foundation work with the come along hitch. That's right. All right, let's go through. Let's wrap up these comments here. Uh, we've got uh, New York saying, thanks, Steve. Yes, my Jack breeds my, uh, breads my Jenny, Jennies. Uh, my Jack breads my Jennies. Well, just have to raise a mule uh, from Nebraska Sterling. I will try next year. Uh, says, great channel. So super grateful to have you in New York. Um, let's see. Yolanda made the comment, Steve, you told me last time to get the mule soft by rubbing their nose. Unfortunately, mine, it's not possible due to an accident happening before I got her. She got caught with her nose between a fence and the serretta that was placed on her nose to get her submissive to work for the peeper. So not quite as possible. Is there any other way to get a, a mule soft outside of their nose? No, it's the only way, you know, and I've seen mules, you know, be hurt all kinds of ways on their nose. They have big splits in them from barbed wire and things like that. And I've never had a mule that I can't do something with. So I guess what we need to do, Dave, is you and I need to go to the Netherlands and help from the Yolanda out. I think um, we do. I think a visit, I think a visit may be in order. Uh, let's see here. That's that good bread and butter. Oh, fantastic. So good. Uh, let's see here. Jim is watching in Alabama. Glad to have you here, Jim. Crispin says, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, the come along. Loved it for our young horses as well, but uh, but a different rope halter for the horses. Kristen Sanders says the come along. Uh, let's see. Uh, I bought, La Laurel says, I bought the come along halter and DVD. Very good. Help me with my mule. Great purchase. Mark Miller says the come along rope will prevent you from skiing across the yard. That's the picture right there. Linda yeah. says, you're right, Dave. Gosh, uh, I'll have to get you in touch with my wife. Uh, yeah. You're right, Dave. The ground foundation kit is a godsend. It fixes the fool on the other end of the rope. I've watched the video over and over, watching the mule, watching Steve's hands. So when I know what I do with the come along rope, my mule, Theo, is a perfect angel and it gives me confidence. I love hearing that. Uh, Diana says, thank you. And uh, let's see here. Uh, that's it, Steve. We got through everything. Hot dog. How about it? Another it. another live that? stream in the can. Thanks for taking a few extra minutes. I wanted to make sure to get through all those Absolutely. questions. Folks are out there. They're really trying to, to make progress with their animal. Um, you have anything you want to say before we're all done here? No, Dave. I, I just really appreciate everybody. This, uh, this past few months has been tough on a lot of folks. I know uh, being a first responder myself, and dealing with these things is kind of unique. Um, I can tell you folks that we have a God that loves us and it doesn't make any difference what we're going through. Uh, he's always right there. And so, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to hang in there with him. And I know my brother Dave will too, but, uh, Hey folks, uh, enjoy those mules and donkeys, treat them with respect, but be the leader leader period. That's right. Um, you know, I just want to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow we are going to be doing a, a, uh, a live event. I put a link in the comment section. It is free. There's nothing you have to pay for, but you have to sign up. This is a special event. So uh, what makes this different than what we do tomorrow is that this one is guided by you. But tomorrow is all about the donkey, and Steve has some things that he wants to be able to share consecutively, really helping you build a foundation, a mental foundation, on what you need to know about this donkey. Now, if you have a donkey, you need to be there. If yeah. you are thinking about getting a donkey, you need to be there. If you know people who are in the donkey community and you want to be able to get up in the conversations and have chats with them, you need to be there. And quite honestly, to better understand your mule, you need to understand the donkey. So anybody who's watching in, watching right now, it really is geared yeah. for you. So I want y'all yeah. to go now and you can see it in the link in the comment section. We're not going to be talking about anything else here. So go click that button, click the link, go register. It's free, but you got to register. It's absolutely free. There's nothing else happening here. So now is your opportunity. Go click that button. Steve, what should they do right now? Go click the button. We'll click see you later. Click that button. It's That's what we want for, you to do. Yeah, it's good for the mule folks as well. Listen, folks, that donkey's mind is in that mule. And when you learn more about that donkey, you'll learn more about what your mule is doing. That's right. So we are done here. 
go click that button right below. Click it. You're not going to miss anything. It's going to take you from where we are right now. It's going to yep. bounce you over to the registration page. Register. Free. I'm going to give you about free. five, ten more seconds. Click it. My favorite four-letter word, free. <laughs> free. That's right. That is that is the price that everybody can get behind. Click it. We got three more seconds. This is your last chance. Why would you not click it? You get to hang out with me and Steve for another hour. Oh, my goodness. Y'all have a fantastic time. We will see you tomorrow. Appreciate you all. God bless.